In this movie, we're going to use the scan capabilities of the Verbos Scan and Pan Stereo Voltage Controlled Mixer to combine different waveforms from an oscillator such as the IntelliGel Dixie 2 Plus to create a more interesting mix going off into our filters and the rest of our synthesizer. I've simplified my patch now, and I'm going to borrow what was my second oscillator, the Disting, and instead take the output from the Verbos. I'm going to hook up the control voltage to drive my little Dixie up here. And then I'm going to take the output of my semi-modular voice and put it into my output module. Now let's start bringing some inputs across. I've decided that I want to use inputs one through four to mix different waveforms from very bassy ones to very bright ones. I'm going to scan across those waveforms using performance controls, LFOs, envelopes, etc. So I'm going to use the subharmonic for input one, since that's going to be the bassiest one. And initially, as you turn the volume control and turn on the synth, I'm down in pitch. There we go. Nice, really low pitch here on the subharmonic. Next up, I'm going to choose, say, the sine wave output, which will be one octave up from the subharmonic. And you can see on the spectrograph, there is pretty much only a fundamental here. Let's overdrive it a little bit to give it a bit more of an edge. For my third waveform, I'm going to choose the sawtooth output. And then for the fourth output, I'm going to choose the pulse. A little bit fatter sounding than sawtooth, but to make it even more interesting, I'm going to modulate the pulse width. In this case, I'm going to borrow an LFO from the Moog Mode 32, get this triangle LFO, which is controlled by this speed here, put that into the pulse width modulation. Maybe a little less depth. That'll be my fourth sound. Go up to middle C here. Now I can manually control which of these outputs are going to be used by using the pan and scan controls. Pan and scan controls are added into these levels. So I could set up an initial mix and have these modify the mix or use those controls to control the entire mix. I have the Moog turned on right now in drone, so I don't have to hold down a key. Let's play around first with the center. I have a narrow width on my pan and scan. And let's go ahead and actually move this out of the way so you can see the control a little bit more clearly. So this means as I scan across, I'm going to hit number one, get in between one and two, hit number two, get in between them, etc. Watch the LEDs and listen to what's happening. There's output one, then I'm in between one and two. Now I'm in the input two, in between two and three. Now I'm in number three, between that, and there's number four, our pulse width modulated sound, and even beyond that on the scale. And if you want to see these on the Mordex data while I'm playing with them, let's go ahead and play with that here, just so you can see the waveforms as I scan through them. The pulse width modulation, the saw, the sine, to the sub octave. I'm going to go ahead and draw my sync for the data from one of the unused waveforms from the Dixie, just to help lock things in. Okay. Now a potential problem is that my width is so narrow that there's dead bands in between choosing my different inputs. So I just need to widen out my width a little bit. So even with this full counterclockwise, let's turn this up till we start to get the first input. There we go. There's a little bit of it there. Let's get a good mix between one and two as we land in between them. Yeah, so we have a dead spot. So let's go to that dead spot and increase our width a little bit. There's a mixture of the two. Now we crossfade and being just the sign, crossfade into the sawtooth and eventually the pulse width modulated square. I think I'm going to go for a little bit narrower width if I can. I can put that mix underneath voltage control. Turn off the drone for now. 
and let's choose something such as another one of our LFOs. Now you notice that the scan and width inputs have their own attenuating control voltage depth control. So I don't need to add in a utility mixer for my LFO. I can do the attenuation right here at the module. So let's go ahead and choose, yeah, let's choose the triangle for now. Put into the scan input, hold a note, and increase its modulation depth. Now, this triangle is being added to this knob. This triangle is a bipolar signal going negative and positive. This is turned full negative. So let's turn this up to start in the center of our mix. You can see us go kind of in between the mix here. Let's increase the modulation depth a little bit more. A little bit more depth, maybe bias a little bit to the left. We want it to be a smoother transition, we increase the width. We're more abrupt, turn the width down. Now that alone has some rhythmic possibilities, and you could drive this, say, from a channel from your sequencer. You do the trick we did in the previous movie of using a sample and hold to randomly change that on every note. But you could also use other controls, such as an envelope, to make this mix change dynamically for every note that you play. So let's take that approach. I'm going to plug this into an envelope output instead, borrow a copy of my keyboard gate, use that to trigger the envelope. The envelope is a unipolar signal. It starts at zero, goes up, comes back down again. I might need to set this initially to the left to start with a bassy sound. I'll start with no modulation depth. Mostly down here in the bass. Then let's start increasing the envelope's contribution. See, we're shooting across the LEDs here. Give it a slower decay. So now each note has this articulation where it breathes through these different waveforms to create a more interesting sound. We can even make it swell. And that's with no filter contribution. It's very fun if we have a nice slow filter sweep on this. Close down a little bit lower. And we go for faster envelopes if we want to. And maybe we'll even set up a slow arpeggio and have fun with the different times to create some syncopation here. a little bit more to the left, or even emphasize this bass sound. So don't think of voltage-controlled mixers as something that you put strictly at the end of your patch. They can be really useful in the middle of a patch to dynamically mix different waveforms, different oscillators, different filters, to add a lot more articulation to every single note that you play.